inside, darling. I always wanted to be good at drawing. I still remember those kids in art class in middle school who would draw something and then everyone else would come around and go like, oh my god, this is so good. And for better, for worse, I was always jealous of them. It wasn't until the pandemic hit that I figured I have infinite time to get good at this thing and to practice. So just sitting in my bedroom, bored out of my mind, I started sketching. And over the next two years, I filled up 10 different sketchbooks. When I started, I was bad, like really bad, not like humble brag bad, like I was bad. My line work was scratchy, my proportions were all off, my rendering was super flat. Basically, I sucked. But I built myself this sort of course of study. I did timed figure drawings, trying to capture the essence of a posed model in a photo in 30 or 60 seconds. I did line work exercises, basically trying to draw a smooth and fluid curve or straight line between two points on a page. I practiced ellipses. I drew 250 freehand boxes in perspective to try to get better at 3D forms. I practiced rendering. I did still lifes. I did anatomy studies and I sketched all the time and I got better. You know, my line work straightened out and got more fluid. My proportions got way more accurate. My shading got clearer. For me, learning to draw was really hard, like really hard. It requires a lot of persistence and dedication and study, but it's also unbelievably rewarding. It's a lot like meditation in a way because you're just sitting there still and you're trying to ground yourself in this object. You're trying to notice every little detail about it so you can get it down accurately. You're not thinking about work, you're not thinking about job applications, you're not thinking about anything except the object on the page. I still remember how a lot of the objects I drew looked, like this pink duvet folded over the arm of this yellow couch because I spent 30 minutes just staring at this thing as the sole object of my attention. I loved that period. I loved the sketchbook period. It was one of my most productive, creative periods. And then along came AI art. Fucking AI art came along and killed my joy. I hate AI art. I hated it when it started flooding my feed, just bombshell after bombshell of hyper-realistic, super detailed, well-rendered drawings, flooding my feed by the thousands and generated probably in a couple milliseconds. Now why do I hate AI art? Because it's better than me, frankly. And I know what some people are gonna say, that this is a me problem, you know, art is not supposed to be competitive, it's not about winning, it's about expression of feeling, and I get that. And yeah, art is about expression, it's about joy, but there's a small part of me watching this hobby that I love so much get automated that wonders, like, what the fuck is the point anymore? What's the point? of getting better at this thing. I'll never be as fast as it. I'll never be as photorealistic as it. I'll never be able to mimic the specific styles of someone else like it. And then a few months later, the same thing started happening with writing. And now the same thing is starting to happen a little bit with music. And my question as an AI researcher is, why are we doing this? Was this ever the dream? Was this ever the goal? What are the positive outcomes of these products? Because I thought the dream was to automate all the dangerous and grueling tasks that no one should have to do, like fighting forest fires and building iPhones in sweatshops. What I didn't think the dream was, was to cannibalize one of the few truly creative modes of expression left to human artists, underpaid as they might already be. But that's what's gonna happen if you drop the value of these hard-earned skills to pretty much zero. And I'm talking about the kind of artists who are way, way better than me, who aren't just doing this as a hobby, who have dedicated years more of their time to this to level up. The kind of artists who make this stuff, and this stuff, and this stuff. You want to automate this? Why? So that rather than commissioning real artists, publishers and advertisers and PR firms and web designers can source their editorial art from an AI? It just doesn't make sense to me. The thing that does make me feel a little better is that AI art is average. And I'm not talking about skill, because technically it's very good. It nails realism, it nails perspective, it nails proportions. But it's just the average of all the work it's ever seen. And this is how I think about it. A lot of art sits here in the middle. And this space I'm drawing can be whatever you want it to be, content or style, whatever. And a lot of it is pretty much the same, and that's okay art. But the further it goes out from the middle, 
the more unique it gets, the more specific it gets, the more it has to say, the less it apologizes for itself, the better it gets. And great art is way out here. What makes great art great is that it swings for the fences in its unique, specific direction. What makes a Picasso a Picasso is the intensity of his conviction in that specific theme, that specific subject, that specific style. And AI art is not that. It's the average of the things it's seen in its training data, so it can't help but sit in this okay region. And even when it's prompted to mimic a specific artist, it's still the average of the works it's seen by that artist. And the average of all of Picasso's paintings is no Picasso painting at all. And that's really the only thing I can think of in this space that gives me a little bit of hope that maybe the way forward is just to get weird. Because weird is different, weird is specific, weird is unique, and your specific, unique kind of weird can't be automated. And maybe, automating out the middle, the average, and the okay will push people to go beyond that, to make great art. Thanks so much for watching, thanks so much for being here, please like and subscribe, and also check me out on Substack where I'm writing now. I write a blog called Post Truth, it's about internet culture, AI, and tech. And I'm writing as someone in the field for people not in the field, so you don't have to know anything about AI or tech to read this. So please go and subscribe over there on Substack for free to get more pieces like this, and of course, to support my work. Thanks so much.